Okay guys, so our next unit is going to be uh, logarithms. Okay, so a logarithm uh, is just a fancy way of expressing a very, very large exponent or a very, very small exponent. Um, if you're asking yourself, what are logs used for? They're used for like seismology stuff. When you're graphing, uh, you also use log calculations when you're trying to find pH in chemistry, okay? So the general form is given by this log with base a the argument would be x is equal to y where a the base is always greater than zero and there's no such thing as base one your argument always has to be positive now when we convert in between logarithmic form and exponential form we go a to the y power is equal to x now there's two different types of logs we have something called natural log which is base e. Now base e is, uh, e is just like pi. It's a number that is derived that continues on and on and on forever and ever and ever. Uh, natural log is given by the symbol natural log of x, ln of x, log natural. Okay, so if you see it, it's still the same rules, it's just base e. When we talk about common logs, uh, we use base 10. If a base is not given, we assume that it is base 10. Uh, common log is written as log of x, okay? Now, the only logs on your calculator that you're able to use are natural log and log. And I'm going to show you a little bit later in this lesson how to evaluate stuff that isn't uh, in those bases. Okay, some general properties of logs. When you have multiplication, you can split them apart by addition, okay? Same thing when you add. When you're uh, multiplying exponents, you add the exponents, okay? So logs are just fancy ways of expressing exponents. When you have division, you write it as subtraction. Anytime your argument's raised to a power, we're gonna take that C and we're gonna put it in front, okay? Log A of A, if the base and the argument match each other, it's one, um, because A to the one power is equal to A. Same thing here, a to the zero power is equal to one. Anything to the zero power is equal to one. And then this one, a log a. So anytime the, the bases match up and log like that, this cancels and you're just left with what's the argument, okay? Now, on this section, it says convert the following expressions to exponential notation. So we're gonna do base, so base to the two power is equal to 16. That's all there is to it. B to the fifth power is equal to seven. Since we're in natural log, it's gonna be base E. So we're gonna say E to the three power is equal to C. Nothing more than that. So we're just converting. Now, the next one, we're gonna convert the following exponential equations to logarithmic form. So what I like to do is I like to write my LOG and my base. So we'd say two to the negative three power goes over here is equal to one eighth. So I like to do it that way. And just so I can check myself, two to the negative third power is equal to one eighth. Base 10, okay, 10 to the one power, uh, 10 to the zero power is equal to one. Okay, and since I'm in base E, we're gonna do natural log. Okay, so E to the A power is equal to 12. And that is how we do uh, converting between exponential and logarithmic form. Okay, now it says evaluate the following expressions without a calculator. So we're gonna say three to what power gives us 81? On this one. So we should know that 3 to the 4th power gives us 81. Okay. 8 to what power gives us 2? Well, I know that if I take the cube root of 8, I get 2. Okay. So the way we write cube root is to the 1 3rd power. We know that from our previous lessons. Okay. Um, this one... Uh, we can do this a couple different ways. We can split it up by subtraction if you want to, or we can uh, just rewrite this. So I'm going to rewrite it. 
as natural log of e to the negative 4. Now, anytime your argument is raised to a power, we bring it out in front. And something you need to memorize, natural log of e is 1. Because this is base e, e to the x power is equal to e, so anything to the 1 power gives you itself. Okay, So you need to make sure you memorize natural log of 1 is equal to 0, and natural log of e is equal to 1. The next one, 5 to what power gives you 1? Okay, So anything to the 0 power gives you 1. Okay? Uh, on this one, just like this previous example up here, Anytime I have a number uh, that's being raised with the argument, I'm going to bring it in front. Okay, and we're going to take 5 to the x power is equal to 5. So 5 to the 1 power is equal to 5. So anytime your base and your argument match, it goes to 1. So this whole answer goes to 8. Okay, we're going to say 9 to what power? gives us one third. Now, when I'm doing these types of questions, I say, how do I go from nine to three as far as like powers, raising stuff to powers? So the square root of nine is equal to three. I think we can all agree on that. Now, since the three is on the bottom, it's gonna be a negative exponent. Okay, log four of negative four does not exist. Your argument is negative. Okay? Remember, we can't evaluate something if the argument is negative. And the last one in this section, log of square root of 10. So if there's no base given, we're going to assume it's base 10. So we're going to say 10 to the x power is equal to square root of 10. Okay? Now, how do I figure out uh, what power square root is? Well, it's to the one half. So 10 to the one half power gives you square root of 10. Okay, now, when we have things that, um, that aren't base 10 and base e, we have to use our calculator on. So we have something called the change of base formula, okay? So I like to use natural logs whenever I'm doing it. Uh, you can use logs, it doesn't matter as long as the bases match uh, and the functions match. Okay, so the way we do this is we're going to say natural log of 50 over natural log of 2. Okay, so you do natural log of the argument over natural log of the base. And we're going to put in the calculator. Now you've got to make sure you use parentheses correct. Natural log of 50 divided by natural log close parentheses 2. Okay, so you get 5.643. 6.43. Okay, now, next one. We're going to do natural log of 20 over natural log of 3. Okay, so uh, we do natural log of 20 divided by natural log of 3. So we get 2.727. Okay, and the last one. We would do natural log of 1 fourth divided by natural log of 64. And make sure you're closing your parentheses correctly, just like I am. Okay, so you get negative 1 third. Okay, or negative 0.333. Able to use a calculator on that one. Okay. Now, some important graphs. Uh, an exponential graph never equals zero, okay? It has a horizontal asymptote to where it approaches zero, and then it, as it goes out to infinity, it's gonna go to infinity like this. And if you think of it, e to a really large number power that's negative is always gonna go to zero. So like one half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one over 100, it keeps approaching zero. Okay, so it's important that you remember the behavior of this graph. The way I remember it is e to the zero power is equal to one, so it's gonna cross right there, and it's gonna approach zero as we go that way. Now, 
logarithmic graphs are uh, concave down, and we know that natural log of 1 is equal to 0, so that's where it's going to cross the x-axis, okay? And it only has a vertical asymptote. The reason it has a vertical asymptote is your argument can't be anything less than 0, okay? Because we can't have negative arguments. So these are just some good graphs to make sure you memorize. Uh, we don't see a lot of these graphs that we're doing by hand, but they do come up occasionally where you need to know, hey, this is what an E graph looks like, this is what natural log looks like, okay? So this has been um, some basics of logs. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks, bye.